this information off if we need to. Game time, guys. I'm going to make one so, quick pit stop. Yep. No problem. You got plenty of time, Tony. So my sister was going, I ah, will talk about it later. Never mind. You're fine. My sister was going through some old, old photos, and she found a photo that I've been looking for for a long time of me and her and my middle sister planting tomatoes in 1984. Oh, that's fun. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. We, we picked a few this weekend. We've got more... Uh... More produce to sell. <laughs> you take it to the farmer's market or? Um, we haven't done, well, we've done one farmer's market. Um, the farmer's market that is in Waterloo actually mm -hmm. requires vendor insurance and um, a few other things that we don't have yet. So when we, we were just doing this as a trial, you know, this first year. And mm -hmm. um, if we see that it works well, then. Then we'll take those next steps. So I was, I'm just checking to see how many people we had registered. Um, last night, there weren't a lot. We had a couple things working against us here. Um, first off, we had um, a system error. Um, and, and it was preventing people from signing up, mm -hmm. but then, um, I did get that fixed. So that probably caused a little bit of an issue, but, um, at any rate, we're recording it and we'll place it on our YouTube channel and make it yeah. available there. So that's typically where we get most of our views anyway. I wondered about that. So, um, okay. even if we don't see anybody here, we'll continue. Sometimes they come in late, um, anyway, so, um, we'll get started here in just a, a minute or two. Okay, folks, good morning. Thank you for joining us for our data visualization webinar. Uh, we are going to get started here with two really great um, uh, speakers. We've got a great program for you this morning. Um, we have Tony Weiss and Ben Schrader here. If you'll go ahead to the next slide, Ben. Um, these two gentlemen are going to share some stories from farmers and um, share their expertise on what's going on in these fields and how FieldView is able to to help uncover some of the insights that we were able to see through through FieldView. So Ben is a climate activation specialist and Tony is a technical agronomist for Channel Brand and they are gonna be going through our examples today. But first, I wanna go through um, an important step to make sure you know how to ask questions. So Ben and Tony can take any of the questions that you uh, can come up with today. And uh, the way to do that is through the Q&A or through the chat. And so if you don't see the Q&A or the chat on the right-hand side of your screen, go ahead and select the controls at the bottom of your screen to bring that panel up into the Q&A. But I don't wanna steal any more of their time and I wanna get started with their examples so, so that you can see how folks are really putting the power of FieldView to use. So Ben, I'm gonna to toss it right to you. All right, thank you, Mindy. Um, this is an example from a few years ago uh, when I was a bear uh, seed FSR in Northeast North Dakota. Um, it, it's an example that really illustrates what scouting imagery um, can do for us, and that's the reason I chose it uh, for this webinar. So in this case, a customer of ours uh, found or saw some fresh, um, some fresh scouting images on August 12th of that year. He knows his ground pretty well, and in this field saw a red streak uh, developing on the southwest side. He knows that ground is productive soil. He knew his stands were good, 
and really didn't understand why um, there he'd have problems um, in that part of the field. So he goes out and checks the field and finds this. Um, uh, there's obviously a, a disease problem of some kind going on. Isn't 100% sure what it is. So he drops a note to his dealer and myself and our technical agronomist. TA and the rest of us go out there, um, check the field, and confirm that it's Goss's wilt. This was in the early days of Goss's wilt and in North Dakota. We knew we had Goss's wilt up there in the area, in the state, but not in our area. We confirmed it was Goss's wilt and realized that he was going to need to change his hybrid selection, his uh, hybrid mix. He was going to need to switch to all Goss's wilt uh, tolerant hybrids. Very cool that he figured this out in August and not harvest. He was able to work with his seed dealer um, to already work out his hybrid mix, mix for the next year. Get out in front of you know supply and supply request and was able to change that up um, that early. Um, very beneficial there for sure. Same time we were curious um, as far as how much yield loss he was going to have. So you see on the screen here a field region report um, that we drew that encompasses just the worst of what that Goss's wilt was. We set that as a permanent field region report so we could follow that through the rest of the season. You see another image there from August 24th um, where the Goss's wilt had, was there and it, it spread some as well. Then come fall, he harvests the field and made what was the best check, the no, no disease check that we could. You see, we tried to wrap around the affected area without getting into it too much. So we had the diseased uh, field region report and then also a no disease check. And this is what we saw. In northern North Dakota, 151 bushel corn is very good. Um, more, the corn, um, the corn was, was, was fairly dry as well in the no disease check. And then Goss's wilt, we lost over 100 or right around 100 bushels an acre. Um, as you imagine, that's a very, very significant yield loss. Imagine not discovering that until harvest in October and trying to figure out what the cause was, diagnose that cause, and then change up your hybrid mix that late. Scouting images allowed that grower to fix, address that problem two months earlier than he otherwise would have. I think that's pretty powerful. He's able to do this with the, with, with the scouting images that FieldView provides. You see the true color image on the top left. It shows some things. Maybe you would have identified a problem um, through that. The vegetation image from that same date. Um, also shows some things, maybe would have been able to identify the problem with that. But then the scouting image on the bottom left, where we turn the best parts of the field green in color and the worst parts of the field red in color. And I think you can see that um, it's much easier to identify problems um, that way. And that's my piece, Mindy. I'll unshare my screen. Yeah, Ben, while you're while we're switching controls over to Tony, um, can you talk a little bit about um, those scouting images and how we differentiate those um, for um, that that's vegetation to that scouting image? So I'm specifically hoping you can talk a little bit about our climate crop index. Sure. So the climate crop index combines things like NVDI and uh, leaf area leaf area index some very some very uh, specific um, uh, metrics within the image um, that we get that can't be seen with the bear with the bare eye I mean, it runs those um, through some algorithms that are proprietary to us to give you that red yellow green map it's something that is proprietary to us um, something you're not able to find with other providers Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, Tony, we will turn things over to you to uh, have you showcase your um, exciting examples. I, 
Tony, I can see your screen, but I cannot hear you. It always helps if you go off mute. Um, so, <laughs> there you uh, go. Uh, good, you got good, it. good morning, everybody. Uh, and, and hopefully you all have a, a nice screen because I got a lot of visual um, things that uh, are, are kind of really cool to see. Uh, so my example is, uh, is, is one that, that, um, you know, is looking at the power of, of field view, the ease of it and, and what basically recording all of your information and having it in one spot can help you to do it. It, it honestly, you know, similar to Ben's example, it can help you solve, uh, solve some questions or concerns that you see in your field. So uh, up on the screen, I've got a, uh, I want to grab my uh, grab the laser pointer. Here we go. All right. So up on the screen, um, you can see uh, that there's a quarter section here. So it starts over here. This is all all one field. You can see a, a, a grove here. That's a, a building site. Actually, um, uh, there's a livestock producer that that lives there and and is who farms this this quarter section. Um, you know, right off the bat, you can tell you've got some really nice standing corn here and some corn over here that does not look very good. Uh, so a little bit of background on that. Um, you know, it's a long term corn on corn field, the whole quarter section. This white line here is not a divider uh, in the field boundary. It, it is actually out in the middle of the field, but there's a separation here that I'm trying to call out. So. Uh, Long-term corn on corn, and this picture, this image was actually taken uh, in the summer uh, of 2020. So uh, if you go back to 2019, it'll help explain why there's this white line here. So in 2019, um, you know, there was, it was a little bit tougher planting conditions, delayed planting, and uh, this particular grower had to switch out his hybrid. So um, when he switched to an earlier hybrid, he ended up going with a double pro in long-term corn on corn. So there's no below ground root protection, root protection, which is, uh, you know, not a, not a good, uh, not a good scenario necessarily. Uh, and over here you can see was actually prevent plants. So he ended up trying to plant this a couple of times in 2019 and, uh, over here, uh, you know, would have gotten so far along and just literally couldn't finish the field, uh, with, with the way the uh, weather was. So this picture or this image is in 2020 in actually 2020 and you can see we've got a double pro product uh, on the right hand side that is standing very nicely and on the left side over here we've got a smart stacks hybrid that uh, that is taking it on the chin uh, from corn rootworm. So one of the things that I guess I would call out here and, and so I was flying my drone trying to trying to take a look at the field and there were some really odd things that showed up out here. Um, and so, you know, as you look at it, or is there anything that stands out? And the first thing that, you know, I saw was there's these squares and I've got a close up coming on the next slide, but there's these squares out in the field where this hybrid is, and these aren't different hybrids or anything, uh, where these hybrids are standing perfectly and there there's, very abrupt edges to them. So it, it's like anytime you have an abrupt edge like that, it, it's very rare that nature actually does that. So it's some, some sort of management management issue or concern. Uh, so um, that is, I, I was like, what's going on there? So the other thing that we, we did see is kind of a yellow strip in through here. And honestly, I can tell you, we, we never were able to figure out what, uh, what happened here. Um, my suspicion is, is fertility, but, um, you know, we, we racked our brains looking at a lot of different things and were unable to come up with uh, any clear answer. So this yellow strip here, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, to provide the answer for that, but these these mysterious squares of standing corn in amidst uh, all of this other corn that is, uh, you know, severely fed on from uh, corn rootworm and, and lodged, um, what, what's going on with these? And so I was talking with the grower and he's like, yeah, I see those, but uh, I have no idea why, why they're out there. So, uh, so we kept talking and, uh, you know, so here, here's a, a map of the, you know, so the first thing I was like, well, what, what is your planting map look like in 2020? So 
so for this year and i'll i'll tell you that because of where i took the picture from the north looking south so i i actually turned the planting maps upside down in here this one isn't quite as obvious but this direction is north this yellow pin here um, these yellow pins here are actually from 2019 they're permanent pins that you can put in field view so when you put them in any map you look at through field view will have that same pin and so these yellow pins are actually where the corn stopped being planted in uh, in 2019 and here's where they show up in the 2020 map uh, this orange hybrid is the double pro and this blue hybrid is the smart stacks so right this line right here is where the end of of the corn on corn this is corn on corn this was prevent plant the previous year and here you can see kind of pointing out the same line this was prevent plant this was corn on corn so that all made you know that all kind of makes sense to me uh, you know the corn worm if there's no corn there they're not going to lay their eggs there the next year they don't hatch so but that still didn't explain what these blocks were the grower was just scratching his head and i said well let's go back to last year's planting map now keep in mind i don't believe he was actually the one driving the tractor but he did know that uh um, so here's the 2019 planting map. You can see it's upside down, but this way it matches up with the visual. Um, what, what you can see here is they planted this blue area um, to, to a double pro hybrid. Um, and then, you know, there were spots in the field that they actually couldn't get into. It had dried up a little bit, so they came back out and they tried spike, you know, filling in these spots and trying to finish planting the field and they just it, it was uh it wasn't working and so what you're seeing here is these green areas uh, these little dots right there are the mysterious squares of standing corn uh, and so and i can flip back and forth here so you can see there's kind of a uh, this is actually a half of a planter width for a long streak a short streak this is a full planter width this is a full planter width and there's actually a little bit over here too. Uh, and you see a half of a planter width, half, full, and a full over here. They matched up absolutely perfectly. And so, you know, what, what that told me is uh, literally um, Western corn rootworm, when they go to lay eggs, they definitely lay it at the base of corn plants. Uh, so, um, you know, because there was no corn in these little these little boxes, um, you know, there's no corn rootworm. The eggs that got laid there, they didn't feed on the on the roots of the corn there, uh, and and thus they're they're still standing after a after a relatively minor wind event. So so that's one thing. The second thing that I learned is with within field view, um, had we not had the planting map from 2019, we would have never figured this out because the grower just plain forgot that he had little parts of the field that that you know corn wasn't planted there um and and to correlate that back when you're in 2020 back to the 2019 year um you know sometimes is very difficult i've had similar situations with other issues um you know it, it's you're going out trying to diagnose a problem but you know growers can pull up their information on field view very quickly and it's it's all right there in front of you and the the, the last thing i'll say about field view here is um you know a lot of people may have as planted maps but the reason that we were able to figure this out actually is because field view is easy to use and it's easy to share so he was able to look in his field view app right away he actually took a screenshot and shared it with me uh and and was like i'll bet this is the issue right here and the 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 ease with which you can have all of your information at your fingertips um made you know if, if he would have had everything stored in books somewhere he would have said yeah i'll go look i'll go look and you know as time goes on you never never get that done with field view it's all at your fingertips and um and it's very easy to uh to take a look back so the the question I always get when I when I show this uh, is, you know, 
growers are always interested in, uh, well, it's, it's nice to hear the story and it's nice to see the squares and everything, but you know, how costly was this for the grower? And, um, so the, the, it, it was, it was actually pretty costly. The, uh, the corn on corn yield average was 140 bushels and where they had prevent plant the previous year and rotated, um, they were at 235. So about a 95 bushel, uh, an acre difference. Plus, as you can see, uh, you know, harvesting, harvesting this was, uh, was not a, not a fun process. So, um, so that is, I believe the, the end of my story. Uh, do we, do we have any questions or is there time for maybe if there's time for another example, we could do that too. Yeah, Tony, one thing that comes to mind whenever you're going through this example is, first of all, amazing that uh, we were able to put field view and pair it with agronomic knowledge and really determine what took place here. And it's, it's a amazing story that, like you said, we're able to go back and look one year prior and see something that caused a difference in the field um, just because of of what we know about the life cycle of Western corn rootworm. And so that's that's fascinating to me. Um, one thing that I want to just ask, and you may not know the answer to this question, but um, when folks are thinking about collecting data through FieldView, a lot of times they come up with um, the concern that they're not compatible. Do you know perhaps what equipment this grower was using? Were they using a 2020? Were they using um, John Deere? Were they using case uh, planters and, and monitors? What kind of equipment do they have that they're using to collect this information? Yep, so so this, it was John Deere equipment, but uh, they actually have a 2020 uh, on their planter. Um, so that is that is what they used. And, you know, one of the, one of the things, you know, uh, field view is, that doesn't necessarily uh, connect to absolutely every last uh, color of machinery out there, but uh, it connects to a lot of a lot of uh, different uh, machinery. And um, also, even if it doesn't connect, there's an opportunity you can data inbox your information as well. Um, one of the one of the things that I see a lot of growers that that are you know, avid users of field view, what they really, one of the things that they really like, all of this is really good, but application maps. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting because you, you know, you're out spraying, um, you're out maybe side dressing, uh, and you, you lift, you lift it up or you shut it off. And with, you know, if, if you have the equipment that, uh, that tells you when and where you did that, um, it, uh, it, it provides you with a map and it shows you exactly, you know, the rate that you're putting on and it, it's a great opportunity for record keeping. And, uh, um, I, I've, you know, I've been, I've walked fields that have had issues before and the growers are able to pull up. They actually have their soil tests in there. They have, um, tile maps that they have in there. Um, all of their applications for the year. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing the amount of information and what's probably, in my opinion, you know, the, the ability to use different equipment and it all, all still comes into field view, but then uh, the ability to actually access, you know, previous two, three years ago information at, at, the, at the click of a button uh, is just absolutely priceless if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to figure out, well, what did we do here two years ago? What did we do here last year? Um, all of our memories are pretty good, but none of us are generally that good. And especially as you start getting uh, more and more acres, um, it gets really difficult to remember everything that got put on, uh, you know, put on uh, a, a particular field. So uh, it's a long answer to uh, a really short question, but uh, just the, the value of it is uh, is pretty amazing. And I've seen lots of growers use use those uh, use that value um, for for making management decisions. Um, many, many times. I love your answer, Tony. Uh, and I love that you were detailed in your description. And and I completely agree. Like, there's a lot going on in uh, dealer minds and grower minds that they wouldn't be able to go back and, and pinpoint this um, as easily as what they could have um, with FieldView. So that, that's a great example. This is one of my um, my new favorite examples with FieldView. So I, I love that you brought this story story to us. 
Um, I do think we have time for you to go through. I know you had some examples uh, f with some nitrogen trials. And so I'd love for you to go ahead and, and share um, those with us as well. All right, just give me a quick second to pull them up. Yeah, absolutely. And if um, Ben, I don't know if you have any thoughts on Tony's example or um, anything that you were thinking of that you wanted to add at this point while he is um, navigating his presentations. Yeah, um, Tony's example is is great in that it shows all the layers um, of data and things that have happened in that field, both figuratively and literally. You see what um, everything happened in that field, and then extrapolate that out across your entire farm. Um, no matter how detailed your notebook is, um, you, it's impossible to remember all of that. And having those layers in the same platform, uh, climate field view is irreplaceable. I couldn't agree more. So, do you want me to just go ahead and, and uh, take off with the uh, next example? Absolutely. Awesome. So, this one is a little bit more uh, what I would call uh, when you think about, you know, using field view to maybe do on-farm research. Of, of, you know, there's lots of different examples from from population, fungicide, starter. I mean, there's lots of different things. This happens to be a nitrogen uh, example where we've got a we've got a grower who uh, th this particular field is a corn on corn uh, field. Um, and so he's a manure or a livestock producer again, excuse me. And uh, so he, he puts hog manure on in the fall. And uh, so he, he's got uh, a base of 130 to 160 pounds of nitrogen uh, coming off of the fall on this entire field. And then in the spring, he did a weed and feed with uh, with another 34 pounds of N through 32%. So he's got, he's got some nitrogen out there in that 160 to 190, but he didn't feel like uh, uh, for this particular year and in being in corn and corn, that, that was probably gonna be enough. And so um, he, you know, while, while you know 190 pounds maybe see, sounds like it it may be a fair amount um you know he 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 wasn't confident that uh that that was going to be enough so in the uh in the spring they applied some additional urea that's what i was just trying to look at the timing on the on the urea so uh, so there's there's three blocks, one, two, three, and they're separated by two check strips, okay? So the north block had spring applied urea, uh, 80 pounds, 80 additional pounds of spring applied urea in this block. And then in the south block, this was another 80 pounds of urea, but it was encapsulated uh, using ESN. Uh, and so uh, that's what this block is. And then the middle block, was split applied. So they did um, 40 pounds of urea pre-plant and, uh, and then uh, in, in season, they used Y drops to, uh, to put on another 40 pounds of N. And the, the, the results are right here and it's really easy to visually see them. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about them here. So the two check strips uh, did 176 and 177. So actually pretty consistent across the two check strips. The north block with the addition of, uh, of the um, uh, 80 pounds of spring applied urea was an additional roughly 40 pounds, as was uh, the, the, uh, the check um, with, with the encapsulated 40, 42 pounds, something like that. Uh, the split applied ended up being a 50 pound, uh, or excuse me, I'm saying 40 pounds, 40 bushels. Big difference in 40 pounds and 40 bushels, I guess. But <laughs> so 40 bushels, 40 bushels, and a 50 bushel increase to split applying nitrogen. And you can see here the the actual um, field region reports that were drawn and the yields that came out of them. So this one here was uh, 217, and then the the little box where the check strip is was 176. And I. I won't go through and show all of the all of the field region reports. Um, I, I've got them, but the, the results are here. And you know, probably the the cool thing about this 
is from a grower's perspective while he's harvesting this you know i'm sure uh he was very quickly able to decipher that uh he he would have rather probably put some some additional nitrogen on the whole field and not left any check strips uh for 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 40 to 50 bushels and that's probably an extreme case but uh that's that's you know the ability to quantify um you know how how a management practice does and do it basically within minutes after you harvest harvest it uh you can do it in the cab or you can do it you know later later after harvest whatever it is um it gives you the opportunity to make those uh make have those learnings uh instantaneously and uh and you know if you if you do need to make a management decision uh you know all of a sudden he's in the combine he may he may want to book some nitrogen because the nitrogen prices after after seeing this he may want to uh want to make some uh you know quick uh quick management decisions based on what he's seeing here so uh just a really again a really visual uh example but there's lots and lots of examples of similar things like this uh you know we always bring you the the ones that are you know the most distinct easiest to see uh you know hopefully uh you always it's all awesome when your your management decisions make 40 bushels uh give, give you an additional 40 or 50 bushels but uh you always hope that uh um you know some of the, the check strips can you, you don't want those to cost you too much so anyways uh that's that's another example of just kind of a a side-by-side -side protocol that you can use in field view and very quickly uh, get information to make management decisions uh, in the field. Yeah, absolutely. I know that we all look back whenever we do these kind of tests and, and leave a check strip, we think, man, I really should have put this, you know, fungicide, this nitrogen, whatever management practice we were, you know, kind of testing that year, we should have put it on the entire field. But if you think back, Knowing that that management practice paid off probably helps eliminate some of those sleepless nights as man did did that additional expense really pay off and now they know right and and they're able to see those results on their own field and and that that to me is the power of field view when we get to make those types of observations and really see how things are paying off on, on our individual farms. Um, hey, Ben, do you have any questions that you want to pose or clarify uh, from Tony's presentation here? I do, um, Tony. So, having done this trial right here, um, what would what would be or what was your next step the next year to keep adding to that learning? Yeah. So, so um, you know, anytime you know, I'll, I'll be upfront with you. Actually, it, it's. It's really a lot of guys will will do some different management practices, but oftentimes it's hard to get them to leave a check strip. So, kudos to this. Uh, thanks to this grower, uh, he did leave some check strips, and you, you actually do learn, uh, and you can quantify very easily uh, as you think about you know. So, what are you going to do next year? Well, um, anytime you're doing uh, any kind of protocols or testing, in my opinion. Uh, you need to have it, you know, does it pay over multiple years? Because every year is different. Every year affects uh, the, the, the interactions of the hybrids, your fertility program, weed control, uh, everything, um, you know, everything uh, um, is, is intertwined. And so, you know, in, in some years, the check strip may potentially be enough. Uh, and so then he's maybe wasting that money, but, trying for the for the for the customer's sake to do this maybe over the course of three or four years so that you can hone in you know well, what kind of weather did i see when it really paid off what did things look like when it really paid off versus in the years where maybe the the the, the gap in in diff, yield differential is fairly narrow what were the weather conditions like then what were you know and, and so you can you can kind of teach yourself uh, and so then when you get to a year where, uh, you know, all of a sudden we've got lots of rain, um, and you know, you're maybe leaching nitrogen out, or there's, there's, you know, you may think you're going to be short on nitrogen. You have that base of experience to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put another 40 pounds on side dress because in my experience, uh, you know, I can pick up 
30, you know, 20, 30 bushels, uh, it'll easily pay me back. So that that's where I think the power of this uh, is it really gives you um, insights into what the actual answer is at the end of the year. And it's very easy. It's, it's, the, it's, it's all you got to do is just keep combining. I like that. Absolutely. And I think that uh, you guys have done a great job of showing different examples of how multiple map layers, yield, la yield layers, um, hybrid maps, as well as field region report and scouting and imagery. So I think these, these examples really show a variety of ways that farmers can use field view on their farms and get answers to the questions that may be keeping them up at night or have them scratching their head as to what should I do? What have I done? You know, this example it, that you gave Tony with the, the uh, corn rootworm example really does show the power of, of what did I do last year or even before that, that helps me make a decision going forward. And so I really love these examples. I appreciate both of you taking the time today to run through these examples for our farmers and dealers. And um, folks, we hope to see you again on another webinar. Uh, we will be doing our pre-harvest webinars here in the next couple days and weeks, as well as more sessions around data visualization, showing examples just like these on how farmers are using FieldView on their individual farms to help them make decisions. Thanks again, folks, and we'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Be safe. Thank you.